Good morning and welcome to News Watch Today. I'm Cameron Lee. And I'm Raylan Lakatos, filling in for Lilia Parks. Bucky's has announced when it's going to open in Springfield. And house cleaning has never been more competitive. Aubrey Jackson is here with your forecast, and Preston Rosenberg has your latest in sports news. This is News Watch Today. Thanks for joining us this morning. Right now we have Aubrey Jackson to give us a first look at the weather. Aubrey? So our temperatures have been pretty stagnant this past week, but they are changing. Let's take a look at it. Our current conditions are cloudy and 53 degrees, so pretty chilly. And if you walked outside this morning, you did notice that mist that was coming down. So a little bit of precipitation there. Um, and our humidity is a bit lower than last week. It is 83%. And we can see that our conditions today is going to be a high of 65 and mostly cloudy. So be prepared for those clouds to stick around, but it isn't going to be too chilly. And we'll get back to that more on my full forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks, Aubrey. You know, what I was thinking about when I was looking at that weather is deer hunting. I'm going this weekend, and I need it to be a little bit cooler. Me too. I went last weekend, and it was a little bit too warm. The deer weren't moving, and so if we could get some cool weather in, it'll be that nice. Would help. That but would I guess we'll know more in just a little while during Aubrey's full forecast. The wait is over as the official opening of the new Bucky's along I-44 is set for next month. The doors will open at 6 a.m. on Monday, December 11th, with the formal ribbing cutting ceremony at 11 a.m. The 53,000 square foot location will offer 120 fueling positions and thousands of snack, meal, and drink options for travelers on the go. Bucky's is known for its clean restrooms, fresh food, and friendly beaver mascot. And the company says the location will bring 200 new permanent full time jobs to the area. The official address for the Bucky's is 3284 North Mulroy Road. With the Christmas season fast approaching, it is a good time to remember how to keep yourself and your home safe with the tree you may put up in the consumer year. The Consumer Product Safety Commission reminds people that the live trees can be a fire hazard, so making sure the tree is well watered is key. But if you decide to go with an artificial tree, make sure it has a fire resistant label. And when it comes to lights, only use the ones that have been tested for safety and toss out any sets that may have frayed wires or broken sockets. The CPSC also wants you to be safe while decorating during the holiday, stating there are about 160 Christmas decorating related injuries each day, with nearly half involving falls. There were nearly 15,000 ER visits last holiday season due to decorating injuries. The White House claims President Joe Biden will veto the legislation that was proposed by Senate Republicans to block his student loan repayment plan. Biden's plan aims to assist students with their loans. Biden's safe plan calculates monthly payments for students based on a borrower's income and family size, regardless of how much outstanding student debt is owed. This veto would not come out of left field for Biden as he has previously supported paying back student loans. The Biden administration has already canceled $127 billion in federal student loan debt through existing student loan forgiveness programs that target specific categories of borrowers. On Saturday, Evangel held their annual Harvest Fest. Cadence Washam has more on the story. Activities Board hosted Harvest Fest on November 11th at the Galois Theater in downtown Springfield. The theme this year was bookmarked. The plot thickens. Students dressed up as their favorite book characters and could join in on the fun in a costume contest to win a special prize. In the variety show, there was acts, sketches, and video performances. This year, Country Fried Family Band, Voices of EU, and Dr. Griffin and Mad Men were a few other performances featured. The Student Development Office joined in on a skit that seemed to be a fan favorite. Here is Eric Patterson telling us more about his Harvest Fest experience. 
Harvest Fest was really fun. Uh, a lot of the costumes were really cool. Got to go up on the costume contest, part of the couple's costume. And uh, the act was really fun. I really liked the student development one where they did the act and the skit and everyone was getting sick. That was pretty fun. Also, shout out to my friend Gannon on AB. He did really well and I enjoyed Harvest Fest. Yes, yeah, my second year going. AB executive Laurel Hill tells us more about behind the scenes of Harvest Fest. I got to work on the countdown trivia and then the intermission slides, which was a lot of fun. And our AB director, she did the AB countdown video where all of us were introduced. And I absolutely loved that. Reading Rainbow was such a fun idea. And she came up with that idea all on her own, which is so awesome. Um, day of, I also got to do social media for all of AB. And I just love doing social media and getting to interview people and getting to look at things and then just get content for reels in the future and that was so fun and I got to see everybody in their costumes and I got to just talk to people and welcome them into the building. Harvest Fest is not the last event of the semester. AB will host one more event before break. Classy Christmas will be hosted in Riggs Hall on November 30th and will be open to all Evangel students. To learn more about Classy Christmas you can go to the Evangel Connect app or Activities Board's Instagram page. Reporting for Newswatch, I'm Karen Twasham. Evangel University students are preparing for Thanksgiving break. Here's Alyssa Nichols with more on the story. As the leaves change colors and the temperature lowers, students know Thanksgiving break is right around the corner. Thanksgiving is a holiday that is celebrated on Evangel's campus, but also a time where we recognize the attitude of gratefulness and the dynamics of our close-knit community. Pastor Mark was able to share his thoughts on the holiday. You know, one of the highlights of Evangel University is the community that we have on campus. Um, the fact that people have such an identity and a connection with the people they do life with on a regular basis is really a testament to the lifetime legacy of Evangel University. To accommodate the students who are unable to travel home for Thanksgiving break, Sudexo provides a Thanksgiving meal before the holiday to share a taste of home. The festivities also carry over to the halls. Jelaine Willis was able to share her experience in Walther Hall. I have lived in Walther Hall for about two years now, and what we normally do is we do a Friendsgiving. So all of the dorm is invited, they put flyers up everywhere, and we kind of just have a big meeting, usually in the second floor lobby, and they set up a big table, and we have a big meal, and it's really fun. Um, it's a good way to kind of socialize with other floors that you don't get to see very often. You get to chat with the RDs, have a good time. Thanksgiving is a festive time for Evangel Campus. If you're traveling away to see friends or family, travel safe. For Newswatch Today, I'm Melissa Nichols. Evangel University hosts their annual orchestra concert this past Monday night. The evening was filled with beautiful music, including soloists by clarinet players and a harpist. The event wasn't only to highlight and celebrate the hard work and achievements of the students in the orchestra, but to raise money. The orchestra is hoping to go on another European tour at the end of the school year, so to help raise money, they sold CDs and merch, making it obvious the music was not the only thing highlighted that evening. Although the music showed clear evidence the students love what they do, the percussionist Abby Dement shares why she loves the orchestra so much. I think I love orchestra, um, mostly because of the people. It's so fun to be with your friends and to just play music, especially when there's a standard of excellence along with that, and you just you come out of it feeling so proud of what you guys have done together. You can give any donations for the European tour through social media or on the campus of Evangel. And for more information on future Evangel Music Department events, visit the official Evangel University website. A 75-year-old Maryland woman who survived a vicious knife attack November 1st was reunited with the retired truck driver who saved her life. Scott Broom reports that this traumatic event had lasting impacts on the victim, Elda Robinson, and the hero, Michael Moore. Robinson said without the intervention of Moore, she would not be alive. He used the resources he had available at the scene of the incident to stop the bleeding until paramedics came. Despite the positive attention he received for his heroic acts, Moore said this tragic event will continue to weigh on his conscience. Up next, making your bed could get you a golden medal. And we'll have a special guest come to talk about Evangel's Chess Club and a tournament happening soon. We'll hear more on that when we get back from this break. Let's get 
get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for mental health and other resources. Call 211 or visit 211.org. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. What a disaster. <laughs> You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that I would never be able to get over it and that my kids wouldn't have a father. I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. For the longest time, fear held me back from ultimately being who I wanted to. I had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. An unusual sporting event was back in action in Las Vegas Monday as participants tried to sweep their competition under the rug. Shifting from the standard Olympic sports, dozens of people competed in the Housekeeping Olympics. This event featured several international teams competing in a variety of categories, including vacuum races and bed making. This is the 33rd year of this event after a four years without competition due to the pandemic. When the event ended, the team from the Beliajo stood tall among the rest of the cleaning enthusiasts and hosted the championship trophy. Cameron Lee is standing by with a special guest. Cameron? Thanks, Raylan. Evangelist Chess Club is hosting a tournament this Saturday, and with us today to talk more about it is Allie Wilkinson. Thank you for joining us today, Allie. Of course, this is such an honor. Of course. So Allie, could you share with us a little bit about your role on the chess team? Yeah, um, I'm the chess club president and co-founder of the club. Awesome. And so then, what is it kind of like in those roles? What do you have to do? What does that kind of look like? Um, as the president, I just, I mean, I organize when the club meets and I, I, you know, try to advertise it as much as I can. But I think starting the club was probably like the hardest part about it. Now so that it's... So did you start the club completely? Uh, yeah, well, it was me and Timothy Watkins. He, um, he graduated last year. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. So what has been probably one of your most favorite parts about leading the chess team? Um, probably just getting to like play with a bunch of people I, I usually, I mean, before it started, I was always just wishing I just had a place to play chess with people, you know, that knew how to play chess. And um, now it just feels like that is possible now. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So I know there's a tournament coming up. What can you tell us about that tournament? Um, it's on Saturday. And uh, it's, it's the first tournament that I've ever been a part of. So it's gonna be pretty, like, not official. But um, it's just to, you know, have, to have a little friendly competition with the club. Yeah, so what does a normal chess club tournament look like? Because I know a lot of us, I mean, I don't know what it takes to play chess. So what does a tournament kind of look like in terms of how it works? Um, it's, it's usually like players, it'll be, a the max amount is 32 people and they'll all play each other. It's like a bracket, like a sports bracket. So um, the winner on top is gonna like get the prize. It, it'll like whittle down. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And what's the prize, do you know? Well, we were gonna do, cause there's a $5 entry fee. So it's just gonna be the combined entry fees. Um, okay, so are there any tournaments happening next semester or is this the only one happening this year? There will be more, definitely more. And what was your favorite part about planning the tournament coming up? Doing it with my team. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And if somebody wants to go to watch the tournament, is that possible? And if so, where did they go or what do they have to do? Yeah, so um, it's unlimited watches. So it's, it's on the flyer. We have a flyer. 
it's um, you just show up to the quad, and if the weather is too cold, we're gonna move to the joust. Um, but you just people can just come and watch and like just like circle around any of the any of the games that are going on. Okay, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm dying to know, I knew we were talking about this kind of earlier, and I really want to know the answer. If you were a chess piece, any chess piece on the board, what would you be and why? Well, okay, I have, I have an answer for this, but I feel like I should explain what the pieces are a little bit, just in case. Um, there are, the back row of pieces are the pieces that, like, do important things. You know, they, like, the, the knight is the only one that can jump, and the, the rook goes straight and sideways. The bishops go diagonal in any amount of places. The queen is like the most powerful. She goes um, diagonal and straight and side to side, any direction, any amount of spaces. And the king does what the queen does, but in one one space. And then the pawns go one forward and then they can kill diagonally. They are like probably the weakest pieces on the board. So if I were a piece, I'd be a pawn. The weakest piece on the board. Yes, but because the pawns are so like, like insignificant, but they're in front. They kind of like lead the entire game. Okay. So the leading role that you kind of talk about. Yeah. There. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Ali, for joining us today. It was great to hear about your heart for chess and the mm -hmm. tournament coming up. It's good information too. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the desk with Aubrey and Raylan. Thanks, Cameron. So Aubrey, what's the weather looking like for the rest of the week? Well, as I said earlier, we did have some pretty warm temperatures the entire week, but it looks like it's going to be cooling down and we'll get to take a look at that on my full forecast. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and Despite the rising implementation and use of self-checkout in grocery stores, many customers and major companies have voiced their disapproval of this technology. Booth's, a British supermarket chain, said it's removing self-checkout stations in all but two of its 28 stores. In the U.S., Walmart, Costco, and other chains have also revised their self-checkout strategies. Customers have stated that the machines are slow, unreliable, and impersonal. The delays for certain products are frustrating. Additionally, other retailers have found that self-checkout leads to higher merchandise losses from customer errors and shoplifting than having human cashiers. Because of these negative results, many companies will minimize their use of self-checkout technology. You know, Raylan, I think with Thanksgiving coming up next week, I'm really curious as to what the week of weather is going to look like, going home, getting to see family, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, same here. 
Could you tell us what this next week is going to be like, Aubrey? Let's take a look at it. So our current conditions we can't see. We're a little bit chilly this morning. It's cloudy and 53 degrees. And if you were outside, you could feel some of that mist coming in. So a little bit of precipitation. For today, it is going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 65. So just like what we've seen, the earlier temperatures this week, nice sunny 60 with a few clouds. For today's almanac, we can see a low of 52 and a high of 65. So we're not moving too much in temperature and it's going to be nice and warm, so make sure to go outside. And we can see the average temperatures, the high is 57. So we are much higher than average and hopefully it is going to cool down later this week. We can also see the precipitation hasn't risen much over these past few days for the month of November. The precipitation monthly average is actually 1.69 inches below average and hopefully later this week we will see that number rise. Our satellite, you can see some of this precipitation moving in closer towards our area. We have some of this Denver and Utah area covered in some rain, and you can see that they will definitely be having more precipitation in those higher altitude areas. Soon, it is going to move closer east towards us in our Springfield, Missouri area, so be prepared for some possible showers coming in. Let's take a look at our radar. For our radar, we can see some of those same precipitation amounts coming in in that Denver, Utah area for higher altitudes, and it's going to move east towards our Springfield, Missouri area. We can see some other precipitation um, near the Miami area, but we don't really have to worry about that. We really do have to worry about the precipitation coming in from the um, mountain area because it is going to bring in some showers later this week closer to Thanksgiving. Looking at our high temperatures, we can see it has not yet cooled down. So we haven't gotten those rains yet. We haven't gotten those cooler temperatures. And the high temperatures for today in Springfield are 67. You can see they don't differ much around the state. So it's pretty even and it's pretty warm. So make sure to go outside this weekend. You can see our national forecast, those same precipitation levels and cold fronts coming in to make sure it's coming this way east towards our Springfield, Missouri area. And you can see further precipitation that we had earlier moving further east. So the precipitation that we had previously has moved on and we can prepare for some new fronts coming in. For our six day forecast, you can see the clouds and the rain coming in slightly, but the temperatures are also slightly declining. For our Friday, Saturday, Sunday area, we can see it is going to stay around those highs of 60s and it's going to be pretty sunny and then the rain is going to start slightly. And then throughout the week, our temperatures are going to lower closer to Thanksgiving. We might even speculate that we're going to have some frozen precipitation coming in as lows on Tuesday and Wednesday are around the high 20s. So that's definitely a chance that we can see, but um, come back for our forecast next week and we'll definitely take a look at it. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. You know, here's my cry. I'm thankful for the rain that we saw up there, but I do not want it to come on to Thanksgiving Day. No, definitely not. But with Christmas approaching, I'm getting more and more ready for Me the winter too. weather that comes yeah. along with that and I'm ready for the snow. Yes. Just around the corner, Preston Rosenberg will be here to give us the latest in sports. This and more when we return. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov slash plan. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! No. 
When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. The victim of an attempted car theft shared her story this past week. She said someone tried to steal her Honda from her apartment parking lot, but unfortunately, she was prepared. The medical technician was recovering from a major surgery inside her East Baltimore apartment when she received a call from the parking lot just steps away. The police called responding to an attempted theft of her car with the windows shattered and wires hanging underneath the ignition spot. It was clear the break-in did not lead to luck for the thief. This is because Francine had just had her car serviced and paid the little extra for anti-theft protection software. With car thefts up then more than 200% in Baltimore, this year she is urging Kia and Hyundai owners to act now. Police are giving away steering wheel bars for free to owners of these kinds of cars. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I am, I, I'm terrified of getting my car stolen. Me too. One of my biggest fears. Me too. I don't have a garage to park my car in right now, and so I'm always afraid I'm going to come out and see my window broken or my car just not there. Well, imagine park, parking in the Evangel parking lot. Yeah. 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 It's a little scary. No. No, thank you. Speaking of stealing, Preston, can you update us on the Michigan sign stealing investigation? Yes. Connor Stallions, the former Michigan staffer at the center of the sign stealing investigation by the NCAA, did not file any expense reports during the 17 months he was formerly employed by the football program. Head coach Jim Harbaugh was suspended for the final three games of the regular season by the Big Ten, which said it did not have any evidence that the coach knew about the scheme. Harbaugh missed last week's win over the number nine Penn State. The Wolverines take on Maryland on Saturday. The New York Yankees ace Garrett Cole was awarded the 2020-2023 American League Cy Young on Wednesday. First place votes were given all to Garrett Cole and to no one else. The former number one overall pick has been one of the game's best pitchers since debuting with the Pirates in 2013, earning six all-star nods and placing in the top five of the Cy Young race four times in the previous five seasons. Golden State Warriors forward Draymond Green has been suspended for five games without pay. Green and teammate Clay Thompson were ejected from the Warriors matchup on Tuesday night against the Motor City Timberwolves for their involvement in a scuffle that included Green placing Wolves center Rudy Gobert in a chokehold. The Evangel men's basketball team opened up its Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference schedule with an impressive 94-57 victory over Tower College Wednesday night. Senior guard Josh Mason led the Valor with 17 points and three rebounds, shooting six of nine from the field. Valor men's next matchup is this Saturday at Kansas Wesley University. That's all for today. Back to y'all at the desk. Thanks, Preston. When we get back, Crocs has a collab you don't want to miss. This and more when we return. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next, and next, finally, next, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires.
Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 McDonald's is taking a big step with a new collaboration with Crocs footwear. Monday, the burger chain confirmed it is collaborating with Crocs for a run of McDonald's themed sandals. The four options to choose from include a purple Grimace inspired sock and sandal combo, a yellow and pink Burgie clock and sock combo, a black and white hamburger clog, and a red and yellow clog. Of course, a number of charm decals of popular menu items will also be available. If these shoes are for you, then you're in luck because these specialty shoes can be purchased through Crocs official website or in person at participating retail locations. It is fitting that we're talking about the collaboration between McDonald's and Crocs on, get ready, National Fast Food Day. And for college students, National Fast Food Day is, it's a true holiday. A it real really life is. holiday. We must celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey, what can you tell us about this next week's weather? Well, perfect weather for going out and grabbing a burger for National Fast Food Day, uh, at least this weekend. We can see the temperatures are staying pretty even this weekend with highs of 60, so it's going to be nice. Enjoy that while you can because we are going to see some scattered showers and temperatures are going to lower as the week progresses towards Thanksgiving. The day before Thanksgiving we can see is going to be mostly sunny and a low of 27 degrees. So there is a chance we could have some frozen precipitation, but stick around to find out. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Aubrey. That's all for us today. I'm Cameron Lee. And I'm Raylan Lakatos. This has been Newswatch Today. Please join us in two weeks. For more on EU TV and for the latest Evangel News, go to eballermedia.com.